everybody, I'm Victoria Favert, a teaching artist with the 92nd Street Y. I'm so happy to have you joining me today for a visit to my studio here in New York City. As a landscape painter, I do a lot of sketches when I'm outside. Hiking. Climbing. And sailing. Or skiing. But then, I bring those sketches in here so I can use them as inspiration for creating finished pieces of art. Right now, I'm working on a series of collages called the Strata series. They're inspired by a painting by my favorite teacher, Gianberto Vanni. Collages from this series have been shown in exhibitions around the world. They were shown last summer at an exhibition in Italy at Villa Monastero in Verena on Lake Como, and a piece was shown at 92nd Street Y in the faculty exhibition. All of the instructors at the 92Y Art Center are professional artists. Each year, the faculty show brings all of their work together for one big exhibition. I have a special guest joining me in the studio today to look at the collages. Hi! This is my mother, Isauda. Hello! Let's take a look together at the piece that was in the 92Y faculty exhibition. What do you first notice when you look at this work of art? What do you think the artist was trying to show you? What are the clues that tell you that? You can pause the video here for a moment as you make observations. So Mama, what do you notice about this work of art? I see that uh, there are some mountains and um, some of them seem farther than others because they are small. And I see colors that they are almost, all of them are green, lighter and darker. So I love that you pointed out that some of the mountains are further away than others and that you can tell because they get smaller. That's called perspective. Things that are closer to us, they look really big when they're right in front of our eyes and then they move further away. Um, the color can also help us figure out how close or how far the mountains are. Yes, I can see that some are very defined and the color is very brown and those are the ones that are closer to me. And the ones far away, they are very light and look very small. So when you are looking at the mountains in the distance, sometimes the mountains that are further away tend to look a little duller. They don't look as vibrant, as bright as the mountains that are closer to us. We call that atmospheric perspective. And I try to use that in my collages as well. So the mountains that are closest to me are going to be done in brighter colors. They're gonna be bigger shapes. And the mountains that are further away are going to be in softer colors, sometimes a little bit bluer, a um, little bit less vibrant. Is there anything else you notice about this piece when you look at it? Um, the textures, the, uh, the greens look really, really green. You can see that the, the grass and um, the leaves, and I can even see some water back there in a bush. So it has different, different textures. So I made this collage using pieces from magazines and I looked through different travel magazines and ripped out textures, colors, and patterns that appealed to me. So for the um, big green shape that you're seeing in the foreground, I actually used an aerial photograph of a rainforest. Um, in this piece, there's also images of water, of Rocky Mountains, of sand, and of grasses. These are the materials that you'll need to make your own collages. Magazines or catalogs that you can cut up to make your artwork. A sheet of paper. Make sure that it's a little bit smaller than the magazines you're using and try to pick a paper that's a little bit stiff. Scissors and a glue stick. Watch my demonstration first, and then you can make your own work of art. First, we're gonna look for colors and patterns in our magazine. You wanna find pages that have really big areas of color and texture, and then carefully tear them out. It's okay if they have a little bit of text. We can remove that later. Since there's a little bit of this image on this page, I'm gonna make sure to take both pages. Ooh, and sometimes you discover an interesting texture on the back too. You may have noticed this messy table in the background when I was showing you my studio. This is actually my palette of collage papers. I gather colors and textures that I like, and then I arrange them so that I can find them later. When I'm ready to make a collage, I choose 
which colors I think will go together well. Gather seven to 10 pages from your magazines or catalogs. But when you're choosing your colors and textures, try to stick to only two or three colors. Here I have yellows and blues. We call this a limited color palette. I'm gonna start by using this page as my background. So there's a bit of text on top of it here. And I know I don't wanna use that, so I'm just gonna cut it right off. Let's just make sure that this is big enough. Good. And I know that I'm not going to need this whole entire thing for my background. I only need until about here. So I'm going to cut that there so that I can save the rest of it to use later. I like to use a piece of scrap paper to keep my area neat when I'm gluing. So I want to make sure my glue stick goes all the way to the edges. And I'll smooth it down. Now to trim this, it's much easier from the back. You can use your scissor against the edge of the paper as a guide and then cut off the excess. If you'd like, you can do this at the very end and get one of your parents to help you. Now I've got my sky. I want to do my first layer of mountains in the background, and these should be pretty light. I don't want them to be very dark because then they'll start to come forward. I want to maintain a nice atmospheric perspective. I think this will be a nice area to use. So let's remove this text first. Ooh, that's nice. I like the way that that color is glowing there. listening to is a piano piece by Spanish composer Isaac Albeniz. It's called El Puerto. It's performed by my friend Antonio Valentin. Antonio is a Czechoslovakian Filipino pianist, performing artist, and teacher in New York City. So sometimes I test out a few rows of overlapping mountains before I decide to glue them down. And remember, we have to work from the background to the middle ground to the foreground because we're overlapping and we need that order to be correct. start making some larger shapes.
Sometimes I have to try out a few different shapes until I find the one that I like. In the foreground, we want to have the biggest shapes. These are the closest to us. Now I think I'm ready to sign it. Here's my finished work of art. I hope you like it. I can't wait to see what you create. Thanks everybody for making art with me and for visiting my studio with us. Hope to see you soon. Bye! Bye.